So we have to ground each row of modules together and then also down to the end phase combiner box. And we'll do that by running on the, um, at number 10 ground wire um, from these ground lugs and then just feed it through the seal tight into the solo deck and then that itself goes down to the end phase box. My name is Jake. I'm with the Westcom Solar Installation Team. A bunch of professionals out there to install solar on, you know, just customers' roofs around the Duluth area and the Twin Ports. So what we've got going on currently is a, a roof mount system um, on a customer in the Duluth area that's going very well. And I'd like to explain a little bit about how we do that and some of the pre-module steps that we take to install these fasteners. So got an array of tools here that we currently use to uh, install what, what this is called as a flash lock um, from Unirac. Um, it's probably the best in the industry for mounting two um, roof style arrays. Um, we've kind of gone through an evolution of other units and we found that this is the best, uh, most, most effective and um, the cheapest way basically to get the job done faster and efficient and have the best quality product overall. So um, what I've got here is some sealant um, that we use to seal everything off. There is no leaks. We only have one penetration in the roof per um, flash lock. And uh, it's a pretty seamless operation. This is kind of the base for everything. This is the only interface with the roof and the structure. Um, everything else is based off of that. You can see there's some serrations for the rail to make sure that it's tight and locked in place when we go to anchor it with the appropriate hardware. Um, so I'll do a little simulation for you right here. So we locate our truss with measurements approximately um, from, from the edge or whatever, and we make sure that it's as accurate as possible. So no, no more than one penetration per, per unit. So we'll take our uh, bit, we'll counter bore it, pre-drill into the structure there so that it's nice and uh, accurate for when we go and lob this guy in. Um, take it and uh, sink or deep, basically. Um, this would be the uphill side. So if you were looking at the roof, um, this little grommet is on the uphill side. So we take our leg, find our hole there, and then sink her down. So she is nice and tight. You can probably park an elephant on that guy and it's not gonna move. Um, I've got another unit here and uh, we need to have at least two in a, in a series here so we can cross the rail on both of them and secure it well. Like I said, she is snug as a bug in a rug. That ain't going anywhere. So we'll put these guys aside and demonstrate with this guy. Honestly, we had used a hand caulk gun for a while, the first couple runs we had with these, but this stuff is tough. It's tough to dispense. So I would highly recommend some kind of mechanical means, battery operated, that doesn't give you a carpal tunnel. It is, this, this is a very, very nice machine for dispensing. Um, so I did um, penetrate my, my cap here, put the threaded nozzle on, and we're just going to demonstrate on how this whole process seals. This one will probably come out a little bit, but at least you'll know that it seals properly through and through. So you insert it through the grommet. There's a little X there, and you've got two witness holes. Um, you should see sealant coming out of those holes to verify that you've properly injected enough sealant to be uh, watertight. So we're going to go ahead and let her buck. So that might be a, a bit much, but I'll tune this down a little bit. I had her at uh, probably a higher setting than necessary. And that's how you know you got enough going on. It starts coming out. So we'll do the same thing with this guy over here with a little bit less aggressive setting and see what happens. Should be more controllable.
There we go. So we only got a little bit of spill out at that that time. Um, that's exactly what you want to see. Um, so all of this on the base is sealed by a grommet, and then you're just injecting that sealant to cover what other ingress possibilities there are. Typically, this will be on a shingle shingled house. Um, we have different means for steel roof and also um, standing seam roof. Um, those those are very, very nice. There's a different style clamp that goes along with those, but this is specific for shingles and works very well. All right, so we just finished mounting these Uniracs, um, the two I've got currently here mounted to my bench with uh, legs. Um, the next step after those are installed and the sealant is injected into the body of the Unirac is to install the rack, which um, will used to mount the inverter to the rack, and then also the modules will be going onto the rack. This is the structural member that holds all the modules together. It's also the grounding path um, for the entire strip um, of the rack. So what we're gonna do now is uh, use these pieces of hardware. These are different types of hardware. Um, this one in particular, you will have to actually unscrew the nut so that you can poke it through and then screw it back on on this side because of the square feature on this head. Um, this one is rather convenient because it's got uh, just an offset and it's slimmer so you can just poke it through, rotate it, and set it down. Um, the only other issue with this guy is you'd have to install them pre-mounting per se to the rail and the rack and then you can just poke that in right afterward and then install your nut. Whereas this one is just a twist lock. So we'll go ahead and secure these. And then after that is secured, the entire length of that row, we're gonna go ahead and mount the inverter to the top. And the inverter is what converts the DC produced by the module into an AC that is plumbed into either your house or line side tap or however it's specifically designed for your application. So another smaller nut, similar to the ones we just installed. The inverter goes with this plate facing up and you snug that up. And you've mounted the inverter with the pigtail and this is where your module installs into the inverter with other pigtails and couplers or connections. And that's all we can show for down here. Um, up top, what we're also doing is wiring Q cables, which I might have some extras of right here. These Q cables join each one of the inverters together. And then at the very end is where your power output is for the system. Um, there can be up to about 13 modules on a Q-cable string before we install a J-box at a location. And from there, it goes into the combiner box. Um, this Q-cable plugs in another connector on the inverter itself, and then it just daisy chains throughout the entire thing until it comes to a J-box and is either capped on one end or spliced into the circuit going into the combiner on the other end. So we're connecting the Q cable to the inverter um, and we gotta make sure that we have the proper spacing. Um, there's different style and length of Q cable. So whomever's doing the bidding on your job should know the style of uh, module you'd be putting on the roof and that dictates your spacing. So we'll just make sure that there's a nice even loop and then connect it to the AC side. And then uh, this end will get clipped and then terminated into a J box which will go down to our solar deck that's got wires sticking out of it currently right now. And that's our string of modules um, for this circuit. So we have to ground each row of modules together and then also down to the end phase combiner box. And we'll do that by running on the, um, at number 10 ground wire um, from these ground lugs and then just feed it through the seal tight into the solo deck and then that itself goes down to the end phase box. This is the solo deck. Um, it's where we have the junctions from our J boxes come down into the terminal blocks and then feed into 
the combiner, which is mounted on the house. So these go down into the combiner. Um, our black and whites come up into the terminal blocks and that's how we get our power from the roof down to the um, lower J boxes and other combiners in, in the house and on the exterior. So today we're installing modules. Um, after we had the rails and inverters and all the wiring taken care of, um, this is the next and final step for installing solar. Um, so currently we've got our start at the end here, just about flush with the rails, um, with our bushing end clamps, and then our middle end clamps that will uh, secure the modules to the rails themselves. And uh, basically it's a structural means to which, you know, the frame of the rail is anchored to the rail itself. So right here, we've got the end clamp bushing. It's like a half moon bushing that is installed over the actual um, bolt that goes into the racking. There's a little quick connect T-nut in there um, with a 7 16 head that will install into the racking and then drive down with the impact of the proper torque. Um, so, so these are end caps and then the rest of this bag is full of the structural bolts um, with some Loctite. You can see that little yellow dab right there that come factory set so that they don't ever back out. This is our module mounting bolt that connects the module to the rail system and provides some structural integrity to the edge of the module itself. It's what keeps everything together. So I'm gonna grab the, actually just the tape measure would work. So we're just making sure we're edge, our edge distance is proper. Since these modules aren't exactly square all the time, we got to check the other edge too. And we're looking good. And uh, we'll continue down this row as we install the module, we zip tie and wire manage up underneath so that we don't have any contact with the roof. There won't be any draping or uh, sagging of wires and uh, the modules will be clicked in, uh, the connectors will be properly sealed, and uh, honestly, th that's it. Um, it's pretty simple in a nutshell, and uh, just the production process from here on out. Well, thank you all for watching. Um, if you would like and subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us and uh, provide some comments below and we'll get back to you at our uh, earliest convenience and provide any solar advice or uh, tips or tricks on uh, how to or what we can provide for services. So until next time, have a good one.